Hey there, in today's video I'm going to review this, the Ultra Human Ring Air, the lightest health tracker in the world. I'm making this video because I like collecting data when I run and also when I rest. I'm running out of arms for watches and I use a chest strap and a foot pod and I had been wondering about getting a sensor ring. Ultra Human contact me, asked me would I be interested in testing their new Ring Air. I said I would. They sent it to me free. The video is not sponsored and they haven't seen it. So these are all my own thoughts and you can make of it what you will. And as always, the video might be long. So there are chapter markers down below so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. I've been testing the ring for about three weeks now, uh, running indoors, running outdoors, on the treadmill, a couple of half marathons. I've been walking in it, I wore it in the sauna, the steam room, the shower, sleeping, pretty much taking it off only to charge in the last three weeks. So what does the ring measure? Well, it has various sensors built in. It has a six axis motion sensor. It has a skin temperature sensor and various heart rate sensors and it measures your movement, your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your body temperature, your sleep and your oxygen saturation. To get the sizing right, UltraHuman sends you a kit of fake rings and the whole series of them here and um, I chose the index finger, that's the one I think they recommended but you can choose a couple of different fingers. I went with the larger size which is a size 12 that fits me perfectly with no slippage. The ring isn't completely circular inside. There's a slightly flat bottom and that goes at the bottom of your finger. I said at the start of the video, this is the world's lightest wearable and that's what ultra humans say. Certainly it's the lightest one I have. It, uh, it depends on the size, obviously. Ultra humans say it goes from 2.4 grams to 3.6 grams. I measured it at four grams or 0.14 ounces, but my scale doesn't go down to uh, points of a gram. So yeah, 3.6 grams seems accurate for the big size. In terms of material, the outside of the ring is titanium and the inside is medical grade hypoallergenic epoxy resin. I've been wearing it for three weeks now with absolutely no difficulties in terms of comfort or skin complaints. The ring is powered by a rechargeable battery. Ultra human say you'll get four to six days out of a charge and the charge will take between 1.5 and two hours to go from naught to 100%. That has been pretty much my experience. It's been pretty good life on the battery. I typically charge it when I charge the Garmin or, or the Apple Watch in the mornings. So it's a very easy to charge. It pops onto a little hub that connects by USB and these are all different size depending on the ring, comes with the kit. And uh, yeah, very easy. I don't find it running out of juice very often. UltraHuman are based in India, in Bangalore at the moment. As far as I can see, they make two products. One is a glucose monitoring patch, fairly similar to the Super Sapiens patch I tested earlier this year. And uh, I think they have big ambitions at the moment. They're sponsoring two cycling teams, uh, UAE and Bahrain Victorious. So yeah, I think they've got ambitious plans ahead. Unboxing both the ring sizing kit and the ring itself when it arrived weeks later is uh, the first impression is of quality, but when I opened it, I really liked the Hello Cyborg. Um, it's very easy, the explanations are very easy. It's really easy to get the ring going. Pop it on the charger, make sure it's charged, stick it on your ring, connect it to your app, and away you go. Understandably, the ring doesn't have a screen, so you download an app onto your phone on iOS or Android and uh, connect via Bluetooth. There are four sections in the app. There's one about the ring on the lower left, then there's one about the M1 biosensor by UltraHuman, then there's a, what I call the library, and there's your personal data. The personal data I largely don't use. I mean, you, you, you put in your weight and usual stuff, but it's, it's not particularly interesting, it's one and done. The library is very interesting. There's a lot of interesting things in the library, a lot of data, I'll go through some of them separately. The biosensor I haven't tested maybe at a later stage, but the ring section on the bottom left is the one where you'll spend most of your time. We open up the app and have a look. And the first thing is the movement index. So apparently I've been, it's, it's uh, what time is it? 10.25 and I've been uh, equivalent of walking 1.5 kilometers so far. But if we open it up and up at the top, you'll see a daily trend. So you'll see a daily trend down up at the top. Then it'll give the steps so far and the active hours calories and workout frequency. What's interesting is if you go up to the top of the app and you slide across, you can go day by day by day. So you can kind of see uh, what's happening in the movement index. 
and the various screens it's the the top you slide across and uh, yeah works really simply really well you can see the sleep index here and again on the app you get a sort of overview in the first section but if i hit sleep index there's a lot of different data so apparently i slept okay last night i had 97 percent sleep efficiency whatever that is i made a video about about sleeping and the different uh, um, sensors I use but it's essentially there's a lot of data in the sleep index here and most of it's going pretty good for me I'm interested in the HR drop that's a, so I'll click on that and it tells me that the top 10 percentile is 99 and the community average is 65 and my average has been 76 for the last couple of days and again one of the things that's great in the app is, is all the feedback and so there's different things about telling you how to sleep better so yeah, there's all of that. There's restfulness, the temperature, all these kinds of things. Your oxygen saturation is here, 98%. It goes through the awake, the REM, the light, and the deep. And that's fairly common with all the various different ones they use. I, I, when I tested it, uh, just doing a particular video, they're all slightly different to each other in terms of what they give, but they're, they're pretty accurate. If you've had a good night's sleep, the score is high. And if you had a really bad night's sleep, the score is low. But it goes through that heart rate, heart rate variability, which I'm interested in, I'll talk about separately, and the temperature when you sleep. So it does all that. And again, if you scroll at the top, you can go back through the data to see how you did it in previous days. If you scroll down, there's a recovery score. So we click onto that. Now you can put in your, and I typically do every now and then, I'll say whether I felt I was rested. It'll ask you to rate how you feel you recovered compared to how it feels you recovered. It thinks I had an 85 recovery score so uh, but last night my resting heart rate was within range my skin temperature was good my heart rate variability form was within range my sleep index was optimal and my movement index was good and if I click on the I'll take click on the HRV within range and again it gives you the percentile average is 93 for the top 10 it's uh, 77 was a community average and I'm 80 so I'm above I'm above the commu community and again there's things to tell you how to do better how to improve your HRV form, all these kinds of things. So there's a lot of learning in the app and we'll, we'll come back to that. Another thing to ring the text in is, is in the app is the circadian phase and your phase alignment. I'm currently in the circadian dead zone. It's 10.32 in the morning and um, yeah, I'm in the dead zone. And as it gets towards the evening, it'll sort of, like last night I was testing it and I was, reali I was realizing I was eating while I was doing my testing and I was, presently in the phase where I shouldn't be eating. I had just come back from a run. Uh, so it kind of indicates to, to run a bit earlier and maybe stop eating so that you can get into relaxation and sleep better. So I am looking forward to using this when I travel to Seattle next week, they're eight hours behind. And I'm looking forward to seeing what sort of data changes I get out of this. Scanning further down the app, you can see the heart rate. You can go daily, weekly. I'm trying to uh, improve my fitness. So that looks like it's trending in the right direction for me. You go down, there's the resting heart rate. That's pretty good. Again, it's trending down. And that's what I'm interested in again, as I get fitter, it'll do your heart rate variability. This is something I'm particularly interested in with fitness. And again, it does weekly, mine's going up. That's what I wanted to do. I want my heart rate variability to go up. And that is something that I'm really interested in is heart rate variability, which is if you had a heart rate of 60, beats per minute you wouldn't if they were every single second exactly on the second you probably have an hrv of zero what you're looking for is to vary either side of the second so that your your beats aren't always even and ironically the more uneven they are the higher your heart rate variability is and the more easy you can cope with stress stressful activities so i'm particularly interested in that got into it during covid the other thing that's down here, there's your skin temperature and then there's a timeline and that feeds into the feedback. So it tells you, it gives you these little prompts telling you how you're doing or what you should do. Like at 8.43, I should have had a movement break. I was sitting here watching videos. <laughs> and then uh, I had better deep sleep last night and, and 9.09, I'm starting to move. So you get these sort of feedback prompts. So if we look at the weekly report and I'll just play this on my phone here, I recorded earlier. So my movement index has gone up, my recovery score has gone up, my sleep trend has gone up, things are improving. I'm coming back from injury, so that's probably easy to do. My restorative sleep has, has improved, my HR drop, that's your heart rate when you go to bed. My temperature deviation has really sprung up. 
but I need improvement on my total sleep. I would have thought I was doing okay, but anyway, I'm at 95. My restfulness is down a bit, my HRV form, and then there's recovery trends. So my recovery is getting better, again, coming back from injury, and various things it's telling me that are improving, my movement trend is improving, etc. So there's, there's actually a very good system of feedback loop in the um, app and it sends you an email so you get an email and again if you click on the email when you're on the pc or the mac you can get a uh, you'll see the same data in a wider format but the same data is there every week one of the things that intrigued me in the app was the performance coach and i wasn't sure what this was but it said to ask questions and so you go on and initially it gives you a series of faqs and so actually one is why is heart rate variability important so there's a whole load of these kinds of, of questions that give you standard answers and then you can ask you can ask a question and so i i put in the question do you think eating rice is better than pasta in preparation for running a marathon and this was something and is something that interests me i've been seeing some articles where a lot of cycling teams are changing pasta to rice. So I thought I'd pop this in. I thought it was specific enough without being too specific. And about 10 minutes later, I got the answer back. Both can be good options considering that you would need energy in the form of glucose. And I thought, yeah, that's a pretty good answer. And uh, the full name of the person came back. Uh, so Rudula, I think that's how you pronounce your name. It was, it was really good. Thank you for the information. And then you look up, you can, in my nature you look at the person on on uh, linkedin to discover that they're a nutritionist so that i thought was really really good and i wouldn't resort to that very often but it's good to know it's there and there probably will be a couple more tricky questions that i do want to know the answer for and i'll pop them into the performance coach section i mentioned the library the button down the bottom the light what i call it the library uh, resources for health and fitness you pop on that there's various things about metabolic education there is the ultra human podcast some workout details fairly standard stuff i live in an urban area i find it difficult to sleep at night sometimes so i often have a white noise on thunderstorms playing through alexa but again i'm traveling i won't be bringing alexa or at least i won't bring a big huge speaker with me so i have to uh, resort to something else sometimes they're in hotels but here they've got some very good sleep collections there's lots of animal stories and I have been using those extensively. I, uh, I, I'll go through just a few of them, the Song of the Ocean, the Meow Log, the Cuddle Story, Call of the Wild, all these various things that I've used. I can't tell you what happens in any of them because, um, well, I fell asleep before the end, but yeah, I find the library very useful and I'm sure Ultra Human will add more stuff as time goes by. In terms of design, it's really simple. There was an earlier version which has a faceted series of, of faces on the outside of the ring but this is a simple band the previous one won a red dot design award in 2023 i prefer this one um the previous one came in a range of colors this only comes in this sort of black at the moment and um, i understand more colors are coming in the future but yeah it's really simple and no more complicated than it needs to be Ultra Human are a relatively new company, but they did share a roadmap of some of the things that will be coming out on the ring. There's a workout mode. I think it might be in beta at the moment. They're trying to develop a stimulant window for when you would take caffeine, etc. That's been a problem for me a couple of times recently. Your respiratory rate and, and measure that constantly and your VO2 max. And there'll be a, a series of things that will be released for the ring based on the sensors it has. I expect in addition to the glucose monitoring that UltraHuman have, there'll be a variety of other sensors and products released along the line. In terms of the wearing feel, it feels great. Fine to run in, swim in, do all those kinds of things. You wear it with the sensors at the bottom, the flat piece down at the bottom. And uh, I've had no issues when, when, when wearing it and I'm really looking forward to running a marathon in it and seeing what sort of data I can get. But yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice, slips on easy and uh, no issues wearing it. The only slight issue I had with it is in terms of wear and tear. Ultra Human advised taking care in the gym and uh, not hitting the ring off metal bars. I have uh, metal handrails in, in the house here and I've been using a metal kettlebell and so I've bashed endless times off metal objects and uh, it has shown a little bit of the surface uh, has, has scratched off. I'll show a close up of it. I don't care. I mean, I, I, really, I like that kind of thing but yeah you might be completely different and if you get one yeah not banging it repeatedly off metal would be a good idea 
In terms of the use case, why use a ring? Well, not everybody is sports focused like I am and probably most of you are. Not everybody wants to measure their cadence and their left right balance when they're running and compare all that stuff. So a lot of people don't need that. They want simple, basic health metrics delivered simply and straightforwardly and a ring does that for you. Apparently, a lot of people dislike wearing a watch and only 12% of people wear a watch during sleep who have, who have sports watches. I, I get a skin allergy with this particular strap on the Garmin. Every now and then my wrist swells up and I can't use it. This takes ages to charge, so that can be useful. I also have a sleep mat under the bed, but I can't take that with me when I'm napping. I do, <laughs> do a lot of napping. And uh, when I nap, the app on the phone asks me, have I taken a nap? And then you say yes, and it pops it in. And so there's those kinds of reasons. It could be I've worn these two watches with a tuxedo. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine many people do. And yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a wrench underneath. But this, you might prefer something that's more discreet with a, a sort of more elegant watch than either of these two. So yeah, there's lots of, of good reasons why you might choose ring. For me, of course, it's I get additional, I'd wear another ring on this finger if I could. And so, yeah, it's um, I, the, the, the ring goes wherever you go and it's really easy. You can just forget about it. I haven't taken it through airport security yet, so I don't know that I have to take it off during airport security, but I guess I'll find out. The ring costs 349 US dollars. It's available worldwide, but you have to pay in US dollars for the moment. The, that is pretty much on par with other rings of similar sensors, but one significant advantage the Ultra Human has is there are no monthly fees. Well, you pay the fee and then you're done. There's also a trade-in section, so if you had a previous ring, either an early version of this or a different ring, you could trade it in. I think there's up to 100 bucks off. And there's also a link for friends, you'll see it in the app, to get $35 off. I'll pop it into the uh, description so you can use that. Well, we're all friends and all that. And uh, yeah, so um, it's a competitive price for this ring. When I compare it to the Ultra Human, some of the things that I can get out of it compared to the Garmin or the Apple Watch or the Withings Sleep Mat, they, they all are slightly different. I was watching videos during the week of, of different step counters on, on, on different devices and they're all slightly different but yeah when i walk or run a lot the steps go up and, and on all of them slightly differently each time and the same sleeping if i'm sleeping really badly they all notice so yeah they're all all the tech is is different on all our they're all aligned but they're all slightly different values and uh, but one thing that this has over all the others is the ease of use it is incredibly easy to use stick it on your finger and you're done should you buy the Ultra Human Ring Air? Well, I really like wearing it. I like the information I get and how it's displayed in the app. I particularly like the feedback. I like the idea that it tells you what's improving, why it's important that it improves, and how you can improve it. I think that is the real beauty of this ring. I like the fact that there are no subscription charges. So if you're looking at a very easy way to collect some health data to be of use to you, yeah, the Ultra Human Ring Air is very well worth considering. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any question you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some other videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.